Uh, good to be with you guys. If you're new with us, my name is Luke. I'm one of the pastors here at Anchor. Glad to, to gather with you to worship this morning. This morning we are finishing off our prayer series. So we've, we've gone through, I think, like eight weeks. This will be our eighth week on looking at the topic of prayer and trying to grow in this area. And uh, as we come to an end today, we want to just really work on the practical, the pragmatic aspect of, of prayer and how we can grow as praying people. So that's going to be kind of our focus today. It'll be a little bit different of a message in that sense where it'll be a lot more Tick, or, uh, tricks and tips and how to grow as, as people of prayer. But before we get into it, I'm going to pray and uh, ask God just to speak to us one more time. Uh, yeah, let's pray together. God, thank you so much for today. Thank you that we can uh, gather as your church. And we pray uh, that as we wrap up the series, God, this morning, that you would speak to us. Um, God, um, we just don't want to be men and women who know a lot about prayer, but we want to be men and women who pray. Um, God, we want to be people who put into practice what we've learned over the last number of weeks together. Uh, so God, we pray that you would stretch us and you grow us in the aspect of prayer. And God, as we um, look at our text today and as we dive into how we can actually put these things into practice, God, I pray that you would help us. If there's things that we have just not done because of laziness or because of uh, indifference, God, that you, by the Spirit, would convict us. If there's areas that we can put some of these things into practice, God, that you would um, also help us to do that. You'd bring uh, brothers and sisters around us to encourage us in these things. Um, God, that you would uh, give us endurance and conviction around them too, God. And so we, we need your Holy Spirit to come and speak to us today. We need you to guide us and to, to work in our hearts and our lives. In your name, amen. Amen. If you have a Bible, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17 is where we're going to be this morning. It's our, our one text. Uh, and it's, it's probably going to be the shortest text we've looked at in a long time at this church. So uh, maybe we'll get a short sermon. Who knows? Uh, if you see my kids around the rummage sale, please tell them not to bring anything home. All right? Like, no. So I give you full permission to like slap their hand. Tell them no. Because I came in here this morning, and this is like a, a breeding ground for stuff to enter into our house through all these weird things on the tables. So uh, as you're finding 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, um, you know, one of the things that has shocked me as we've gone through this series is just how amazing prayer is. Now, that, that probably shouldn't shock me as a pastor, but the more we've gone through the series, the more I've just kind of blown, blown away at God's goodness to us. Like, like the, the all-powerful God, the creator of the universe, the God who, who knows all things, who can do all things, who is at a work in our world, he invites us to come before him and to pray, to make known our request. He invites us to enter into communion, into relationship with him, to know him and bring our needs, our wants, our expectations, our deepest desires to him. Like that, that blows my mind. It should blow your mind too. It should blow our minds. We are able to come before God and pray. One author, Paul Miller, described prayer in two simple words. Just ask. Just ask. That is the invitation given to us. As people of God, we have been given the invitation, just come to our Heavenly Father and just ask. Ask, just ask. And over the, the last eight weeks or, or seven weeks of this series, we've looked at what that looks like, how we can come before our Father and just ask Him to intervene in our lives, to meet our needs, to be at work in us. We've explored the, the heights and the depths of prayer, the different aspects of prayer, and again, I, I'm left, as I reflect on this series, just amazed. Amazed at God's love for us, his invitation to us, and the opportunity that we have to just ask. And what amazes me even more is how much we don't do that. Like we, we have full access to God. We have this invitation. God wants you to come to him. And like if, if you take one thing away from the past eight weeks, hopefully it is that God wants you to come to him and just talk with him. And it's the easiest thing that we can do, prayer. And yet we struggle with it. We, we often don't 
ask. We often don't come to him. We often don't pray. And, and we aren't the only ones. If your Bible's open to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, Paul is writing to the church in Thessalonica and he gives them some simple instructions on prayer. He says this, I think it's on the slide behind me. Pray, oh no, I went a little far. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Three, three simple words. Pray without ceasing. Why, why did Paul say that to the church of Thessalonica? Well, because like them, we too, or like us, they too struggled to pray. When it came to prayer, they, they probably knew about it. They understood the, the ins and outs, the invitation from God. And yet they struggled to put that invitation into practice. And so Paul encourages them at the end of this letter with three simple words, pray without ceasing. What, but what does that actually mean? Does that mean that you and I, we go about our lives and every moment of consciousness we are praying? Does that mean that we're having this ongoing conversation with God? What does it mean to pray without ceasing? Well, in just simple terms, the call to pray without ceasing is a call to pray frequently, to have this ongoing rhythm or habit of prayer in our lives. It's an invitation, encouragement to us to pray and to make prayer a key part of our lives. That's what Paul is calling us in the church to do. What, what drives this call is the unbelievable reality of prayer. That we expect God to not only hear our prayers, but to answer our prayers. Because of this, we are invited to pray without ceasing. To pray passionate, bold, persistent prayers of God. To come before him with everything that's going on in our lives and to make it known to him. The, the amazing reality that God wants to hear from us and he has the power to answer our prayers should drive us to come before him. Mark Barrison put it this way. He says this, God has determined that certain expressions of his power will only be exercised in response to prayer. Simply put, God won't do it unless you pray for it. God won't do it unless you pray for it. We have not because we ask not. The greatest tragedy in life is the prayers that go unanswered because they go unasked. Why do we pray without ceasing? Because God hears our prayers. God has the power to work as our prayers come to him and God answers our prayers. Again, think about the, the needs and desires of your life that you face right here, right now. What, what are those things that God is inviting you to bring before him? Think about the far reaching hopes you have for your life for your future. God invites you to bring those things before him. Think about your desires, your wants, your longings. God wants you to bring those things before him in unceasing prayer. Repeated, ongoing, habitual prayer in our lives. And God has the power to answer those things. Jeremiah 32, 17 reminds us that nothing Nothing is too hard for God. Nothing is. See, when, when we believe these amazing truths, it's like pouring gasoline on fire. You guys ever done that? If, you, if you've been around Anchor Church for a while, you get to know me. I was a bit of a pyro as a kid. Gasoline and fire are two amazing things. I remember in, in my backyard one time, <laughs> there's kids in the room, yeah. They're only my kids, I think, so... They've heard these stories. I remember throwing gasoline on fire when I was, uh, a number of years ago and having it travel up to the gasoline can. And the gasoline can caught on fire and my backyard almost caught on fire. Bailey was asleep, so it was, it was all right. But it was, it was crazy. The fire just blew up. When we believe these things, it's like pouring gasoline on fire. It ignites our prayer lives. 
And yet the reality for many of us is that we don't pray without ceasing. The reality for many of us is we don't have a habitual prayer life. The reality for many of us is even though we know these truths, we might even believe these truths, maybe you were throughout the series, these truths have kind of sunk deep into your soul and you might have a desire to pray. The reality is many of us have a hard time actually putting them into action in our lives. That desire hasn't tra translated to action yet. And so the question we might be asking is, how can I have a thriving prayer life? Or as Paul put it, how can I pray without ceasing? And that's what I want us to look at this morning. We want to spend our time answering this question. How can I have a thriving prayer life? And like I said, this is going to be a little more pragmatic than, than normal. All right. We're going to try to look at some concrete steps we can take in this. And so as we do this, we're going to see that we can have a, th uh, a thriving prayer life when we develop habits of prayer. We can have a thriving prayer life when we develop rhythms of prayer. And we can have a, fr a thriving prayer life when we look for helps in prayer. All right, that's what we're going to look at this morning. So number one, we can develop a thriving prayer life uh, through habits of prayer. A thriving prayer life develops prayer habits. And this is incredibly unromantic. A lot of times when we think about a prayer life or we think about something like a spiritual discipline, we think we should naturally have a desire for it. We should have like this attraction to it. And if we're not attracted to it, if it doesn't feel natural, it can't be right. right. This is especially true when it comes to our spiritual lives. Like if we don't feel a desire or a deep longing to pursue the things of God, then, then maybe it isn't for us. Maybe it's for certain spiritual people, like the spiritual elites, but it's not for me. Anything that feels awkward in our faith, we kind of push to the sides, right? Like the reason why you and I often don't share our faith, it's because it's awkward. It makes our palms sweaty. It makes us feel uncomfortable. And so maybe we just say, I'm not spiritually gifted in this. And so I'm not going to do it. I'll leave it to the evangelists, to the, the paid prof professionals. But this doesn't feel natural to me. I don't think I'm good at it. So I'm not going to do this thing. And that's how we often approach many things in, in the spiritual disciplines, including prayer. When it comes to prayer, if it doesn't feel natural, if we don't feel like we're good at it, which by the way, I mean, it's talking. Do you have a voice? Can you say words? Congratulations, you're a natural at prayer, right? Like, just so you know, it's a free tip. But just because we don't feel like we're good at it, we don't feel like we should have this as a discipline in our lives. Because we don't have a, a longing for a deep, ongoing prayer life, we're, we're not sure if it's for us. But listen, this, this romantic view of, of the spiritual disciplines that if you need to have this attraction to it, it needs to, to feel right for you, that, that's, that's just complete garbage. Because here's the thing, we forget about something called the fall. The fall has come into our world when sin entered our world. It distorted everything about us. The longings, the desires of our hearts, the things that should feel right all got messed up because of sin entering into our world. And so as sin came into our world, it distorted our feelings. It distorted, distorted our longings. It, it messed up with the compass of our life. Do you know if you have a compass and a magnet next to the compass, the compass will not point true north? And that's what sin has done to us. Sin's like a, a magnet next to the compass of our lives and it distorts where we should be going, what we should be feeling. And so our feelings lead us astray constantly. They don't point us right to God. They don't point us to things that will give us freedom and life. They, they lead us astray. And so when it comes to things like the spiritual disciplines of prayer or reading our Bibles or sharing our faith, we can't trust our feelings alone. We have to actually understand that our feelings will lead us away from what's most important to us. The good news is though, is that we can train ourselves to, to develop a desire for the things that are actually best for us. If you look at the social sciences of our world, there's a lot of talk about habits these days and how we can train our lives through 
habit forming. There's a book called Atomic Habits, which is a great book on it. If you haven't read it and you're interested in that thing, it's probably the book to go to. But most of our lives run on habits. And our habits shape our desires and our desires shape what we do. And so if we want to grow in the area of prayer, if, if you're here this morning, like I don't have a, a habit or a habitual prayer life, I don't necessarily want to pray, I don't have a desire to pray. The place to start is actually making a prayer habit in your life. Like I said, prayer, our, our habits run most of our lives. Like this morning, you probably woke up and you have a, a habit every morning that you go through and you do, do those things without even thinking about it, right? For me, I wake up, I brush my teeth, I have a shower, I go have breakfast, I have my coffee. And on Sunday mornings, I go down to my office, I go through our texts, our sermon, and then I come here. I don't even think twice about it. It just naturally flows. You have a morning habit, you have a night habit. If you're married, you have your side of the bed that you sleep on, right? Like none of you guys are freaks and you switch sides every other night. <clears throat> Excuse me. That'd just be weird, right? Like you have your side of the bed. That is your habit. That's where you sleep. We, we have these habits that run our lives. The thing is, is we can form new habits. We can develop new habits. And these habits can shape our lives when it comes to prayer. So how do we form prayer habits? Three, three steps to form some prayer habits. If you're here this morning and you have absolutely no prayer life, you would say you, you don't have an ongoing frequent prayer life. How can you start a habit of prayer. Three, three steps. Number one, start where you are. Start where you are. If you're here this morning, please do not make it your goal to pray for 15 minutes a day or 10 minutes a day or five minutes a day if you don't pray at all because you will not reach that goal. It's not realistic for you. If you're here this morning and you're like, I have no prayer life. I want to develop one. Start where you're at. Pick a, uh, pick a place and a time and, and say, like, my goal is to pray for one or two minutes a day. Just a small goal that you can accomplish, that you will crush. Maybe that's in the morning when you're driving to work. If you can pray and drive at the same time, do it. Maybe it's in the shower, right? Maybe it's, you know, when you sit down at your office chair, one or two minutes and pray. What, what do you pray for? Well, there's a, a, a great acronym called ACTS that you can pray through. Acts kind of reminds you of the main things to pray about. Adoration. Spend time thinking about God's character and who he is. And just thank him for, for his goodness and his love for you, how he's saved you. Worship him through prayer. Confession. Invite the spirit of God to come and search your heart, to reveal any sins in your life. Bring them up and then confess them. Thanksgiving. Thank God for his love for you for his redemption of you. Thank, you. thank him for all the provisions he gives you, how he's met your needs. And then supplication, which is a fancy word for just asking him for things. Ask him for what you need in your life. Ask him for the, the things that you're facing throughout that day. Just invite him into those things and make your request known to him. This is a, a simple prayer that you can start out your day with. You can pray, any time throughout your day, but you need to start somewhere. Start somewhere, one or two minutes, and just know three or four things that you want to pray through. Acts, again, is a great, a great prayer guide. Number two, pick a time or a place. Pick a time or a place. And, and use that time and the place every day. So again, it could be your car. It could be your, if you're like awake enough in the morning, you can lay in bed and pray, do that. I would just fall back asleep, Right? And I wouldn't wake up for a while. Uh, but, but find a place that you can pray in. And, and make a reminder. Like a certain time every day. Uh, if you were, have been with us for a while, you might remember back in the day we had uh, 10.02 on our alarm clocks. We set those every day. And it would go off and we would pray Luke 10.2. We would pray for workers for the harvest. And so we had an alarm set on our phones or on our watches. So maybe you need an alarm set in your phone just to remind you every day, at, you know, nine o'clock, you're going to spend one or two minutes praying. Or every day when you get in your car before you leave your driveway, you are going to pray. That's your, your prayer closet, so to speak. But pick a time or a place or pick a trigger. All right. We talk a lot in our culture today about being triggered by things, right? If you say certain things, you get triggered. Have a prayer trigger. So for me, whenever I'm talking to someone and they bring up an issue in their life 
or they bring up something they're going through, or a heartache or a need, that's a, a prayer trigger for me. So I automatically just remember that thing and I'll put it in my phone after that conversation so I can pray for them. But have something that just triggers you to go to prayer in your life. So start where you are, pick a time or a place. Number three, when you fail, keep going. When you fail, keep going. You are going to fail at this at some point. You will miss a day. You'll miss your time and your place. You'll be too busy. You'll fall asleep when you're doing it. You'll get distracted. I don't know what will happen to you, but, but pick a time and a place. And when you fail, keep on going. Don't beat yourself up. It's, it's going to be okay. You'll make it through it, I promise. But come back to it. Come back to it. The next day, get back on the horse. Be reminded of what you're doing. See, the, the point of the habits, the point of developing prayer habits are not the habits themselves. That the habits are, are tools that we can use to put us in a place where we encounter God. We can use these things. We can develop habits so that we can find ourselves in places where we can encounter God. Where we can be men and women who pray without ceasing. See, the habit of prayer puts us in a position where we can worship God in prayer, to make requests known, to confess sin, to do these things. So develop a prayer habit. Number two, a thriving prayer life is marked by prayer rhythms. Maybe you're here this morning and you're like, okay, I have habitual prayer in my life. I pray every day or I have a, a routine to pray. I'd invite you to go a little bit deeper. Develop prayer rhythms. And Paul's call for us to pray without ceasing, he knows that so often you and I, we have a daily struggle. I don't know if you know this, but you and I, we struggle daily with fidelity to Jesus. We struggle to remain faithful to Jesus every day. One of my favorite hymns puts it this way. It says, prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. All of us move away from Jesus throughout our day. We begin to believe that we are capable of living on our own. We're capable of, of making it through this life. You see, we're in a contested space that's fighting for our souls. A space that constantly calls us to live for self. A space that constantly tells us that you are not enough. A space that constantly makes us anxious about everything. From work to kids to life to your favorite baseball team, if they're going to win or not. Just me? Okay. Thanks, Nick. And in this contested space, the challenge that we have is to continually come back to Jesus. And a rhythm of prayer helps us with that. A rhythm of prayer provides ongoing communion with Jesus throughout our days. It's a rebellion to constantly come back and choose Jesus over and over again. It's a constant reminder to us to come back to him as our, our chief need, our only hope. So, so what is a rhythm of prayer? Well, a rhythm of prayer can look differently for each one of us, but it, it's simply this. It, it looks at the natural rhythm of our day. So waking up, going to work, having lunch, coming home, going to bed. It looks at our natural rhythms of our day, and it takes those natural rhythms as cues for us to pray. And so it looks at our life and it says, all right, every morning when you wake up, before you get out of bed, you pray. Every day at lunch, before you, you start eating, you just spend some time praying. Every night when you come home from work or, or before you eat supper, you spend some time praying. And every night before you go to bed, you spend some time praying. And as you take these clues, they, they begin to form another prayer habit, a deeper prayer habit in your life. Some of these rhythms can, can look like this. Every morning you go through the Lord's Prayer and you pray the Lord's Prayer. You just don't recite it line for line mindlessly, but you go through it and you say, all right, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. God, this is why you're so glorious to me. I woke up with breath in my lungs. I woke up in a house. You provided good things for me. You pray, God, your kingdom come. God, as I go about my day today, help me be an ambassador for your kingdom and this earth. I know I'm going to be going to work today and these issues will be going on at work. Help me to be light and darkness in these issues. Give us a day our daily bread. God, I need you to provide for our family's needs today. God, I have this need this week in my life. Would you please provide for it? So every morning, pray the Lord's Prayer. At lunch, the rhythm could be one of, of praying for people around you who don't know Jesus. 
Just spend a few minutes before you eat lunch and just pray for your friends or family who are far from God, that God would transform their lives, that he would save them. When you come home from work, I don't know about you, when you, I come home from work, I guess I work from home, so I'm always at home when I work. When I come up from the basement, <laughs> up the stairs from work, before I do that, I, I could pray just for God to give me new motivation to love my family well. I don't know what your situation is. Maybe you come home from work, you're exhausted, you're frustrated, maybe you had a bad day. Before you get out of the car and go inside, you can just sit there in your car and pray, God, would you help me be kind to my family? God, would you give me the, the motivation to love my kids well as I come home? God, would you help me be a, a person of service to my family? Help me to invest in them. And then before bed, a good rhythm would be just to pray uh, and ask for God to, to give you peace as you sleep. I don't know about you guys, but um, man, when I put my head on the pillow, you know, my body is exhausted, but my mind starts running. So it's a chance for you to give those thoughts over to God. What is causing anxiety in your heart, in your life? So it's an invitation from God to you to pray, to give those things to him, to invite him, the God who does not rest or slumber, who is all powerful to take those things and work within them, to bring about peace to you. So these are our rhythms of prayer. Maybe you're at a spot in your spiritual life where yes, you pray throughout the day, maybe once or twice, but maybe you can go a little bit deeper and start adding more rhythms of prayer to your life. You see, it's through these rhythms of prayer that we, that we remain in communion with God. As we constantly go to him throughout our day, we're being reminded of who he is, who we are, what we need and how he can provide for us. We are being reminded that he invites us to just ask, to just ask. The third thing we see is this, a thriving prayer life sometimes needs help. A thriving prayer life sometimes needs help. There are times in our lives where we get stuck spiritually and we need, we need help. We need help. There are times in our prayer life where we can have rhythms of prayer, we can have habits of prayer, but we don't feel like we're actually growing deeper in prayer. We, we kind of feel stuck in a rut of prayer. And in these times, we, we need help. So for me, I, I suffer from prayer ADD. I don't know if anyone else does. Like I have, I have ADD in the, in the best times, but when I'm praying especially, like I can be praying for you and you could be going through like the most dramatic situation in your life and I'll be praying for you. And all of a sudden I'm thinking like, I wonder how much a quarter of beef cost, right? Like I wonder, I wonder how many steaks I would get with that. Or if like, would I get a brisket? I should Google that. And then all of a sudden, like I am not thinking about you at all, no matter how dramatic it is you're facing. And then 10 minutes later, I'm Googling a quarter of beef and figuring things out, finding producers near me. I'm like, oh yeah, I was praying for, for Mick. Shoot, right? I, that's my prayer life. I get distracted so easily and it, it frustrates me. Like I hate that about me. And so like that, that's a, a ceiling to my prayer life. It, 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 it stops me in growing these things. And so I've had to bring in extra tools to help me pray. I've had to restructure my prayer life in a certain way so that I would grow in this. And so I don't know where you're at. Maybe you have prayer ADD. Maybe you have other issues when it comes to prayer. Maybe you're just like, I'm not motivated. Well, maybe you need something to help you motivate in that. Maybe you are just forgetful in it. And maybe there's other things you need in that. So, so I want to give you a few really practical things to help you, some tools to help you in prayer if you feel stuck. Uh, the first one is, is an app. There's an app for that. It's called Prayer Mate. And uh, this is one that I think Ryan Anderson told me about. It's a, it's a great app and you can use it. Uh, it has prayer reminders. It will alert you whenever you want to alert you. It can go through and give you verses to pray through for certain things. You can make your own prayer schedule on it for people and, and different things to pray for. It's a great tool. If you're a tech person and you can use an iPhone or an Android, uh, you can do that. Like, get the app. It'd be great, all right? Prayer Mate, great app. Now, you see, I, I can't use this app because when I have my phone in front of me, I'll find myself on Twitter or reading the news or watching YouTube videos. 
It just naturally goes there. And so I, I get distracted when I'm praying. So I can't do that. So I, I've started doing prayer journals. A prayer journal, I basically write out a little bit about life, what I'm going through, what I'm facing. And I use, as I write, just those opportunities to pray. As I'm writing, I'm praying, hey God, I'm stressed out about this right now in my life. Would you come into the situation? As I'm thinking about things going on with our church or certain people, as I journal through it, it's an opportunity for me to pray about those things. And so maybe for you, a prayer journal would be something that would help you in this. You set aside your prayer time and you take out your journal and you write through it and you write out your prayers and you pray to God. Or maybe prayer cards. If you're like, I don't want to journal, journaling sounds, you know, not like my thing. A prayer card might be a good thing for you. Paul Miller in his book, um, A Praying Life, which I highly recommend you guys buy. If you want to grow in prayer, buy this book. It's unreal. It is so good. It, it has influenced a lot of the series and, and my understanding of prayer. But he recommends using prayer cards. And this is his thing. And he spends a number of chapters talking through how he uses them. But prayer cards are basically an index card you can take. You write out someone's name, and then you write out scripture that applies to what you want to see God do in their lives. So if you have kids or maybe a spouse, you can put their name and then a scripture next to it. And then you write out a number of prayer points related to what's going on in their life. And you, you highlight what you're praying for. And then you just have this group of cards you can go through every single day and pray through and understand what you're praying for. And you're a little more organized, a little more thoughtful, and you're praying scripture through them. I, I would encourage you, if you're like, man, I want to grow deeper in this, maybe a prayer card, maybe a prayer journal, maybe the prayer mate app, or the yeah, prayer mate app. Get, get one of those things, but, but push into it. Go deeper in these things. See, the, the thing I, I love about the prayer cards, the prayer journal, is you can go back through them and you can see what God has done. Like if I was to ask you, how has God answered your prayers over the last year? Would, would you be able to articulate what those things have been? If we were to sit down for coffee and I was like, all right, you're, you're praying. How has God answered those prayers? You might sit back and you might have like one big thing, right? That you're like, yeah, God's done this and praise God for that. But what about all the, the little things we pray for throughout our day? How has God answered those things? See, here, here's the thing. We, we often don't think about, we don't remember how God has answered our prayers. We don't. Unless it's something spectacular and life-changing and amazing, we, we don't see God's faithfulness through our prayers very often because we move on. We so quickly moved from thing to thing to thing. And that's not a bad thing, but what happens is we begin to forget the beauty and power of God in our lives. In the Old Testament, if you read through the Old Testament, you would see that oftentimes the people of Israel made little statues throughout the desert or throughout their journey throughout life. And these were, were places where God did significant things. And these were reminders to them of God's faithfulness. And as they remind, were reminded of God's faithfulness, faithfulness, they were encouraged of his future faithfulness. See, when God answers our prayers, when God's at work through our prayers in our lives, it encourages us. It's a reminder of God's goodness, his power, and his ability. And that reminder oftentimes encourages us to continue to pray to continue to seek his face and the things that we are going through right now. It helps us not be discouraged. See, I think one of the biggest killers of a praying life is discouragement. It's discouragement. We, we pray for things and when we don't see them happen right away, we often get discouraged. We lose heart. We move on. See, here, here's the thing. Prayer is like planting a garden. It's like plant, planting a garden. Every time we pray, we're, we're putting seeds into the ground. Now, when you plant a garden, you put the seeds in the ground, and the next day when you go outside, do you, do you see a harvest? No. And when you don't see a harvest, do you get frustrated and then go to the store and buy more seeds and put more seeds in the ground? No, you... you, you 
You water and you wait. So often in our prayer lives, when we don't see God bring a prayer harvest or we don't see him answer our prayers right away, we we don't persist. We just move on to the next thing in our lives thinking, okay, God's not going to work in this area. The thing about about prayer cards or a prayer journal is you, you constantly are praying through them. And as you persist in prayer through them and as you see God answer those prayers, you can mark it on the card. You can date it. God, you've answered this prayer for my family in this date, this place. God, you are faithful. It encourages you to continue to keep on praying as you go. So I want to encourage you, maybe you're at a spot where you feel like you are, are tapped out in your growth as a person of prayer. Pick up a prayer card, get a prayer journal, do the, the prayer mate app, push yourself to go deeper. Push yourself to go deeper. Don't, don't give up, but challenge yourself. As, as we wrap up this series, I, wanna, I want us to, to end where we started. If you can remember all the way back to February when we started the series, our very first sermon in the series was, was on how to grow, how, how to have a growing prayer life. And we said that in that sermon, it's not through tricks or tips or, or new methods. Those won't empower your prayer life. Those are, are good things, but they won't transform your prayer life. What will transform your prayer life is understanding who God is. That he is a good father who wants you to come to him in prayer. And I shared this quote with you. It says this, the most important discovery you'll ever make is the love the father has for you. Your power in prayer will flow from the certainty that the one who has made you likes you. He is not scrowling at you. He is on your side. Unless our mission and our acts of mercy, our intercession, petition, confession, and spiritual warfare, for, spiritual warfare began and end in the knowledge of the Father's love, we will act and pray out of desperation, determination, and duty instead of revelation, expectation, and joy. These, these uh, tips and forming habits and rhythms and pushing deeper using some of these tools, they're helpful to us, for sure. They're good. I hope you put them into practice. But listen, they are completely pointless if you don't understand that God the Father loves you. He likes you. He wants to be with you. He is pursuing you. That prayer is an invitation to come to the dad who loves you, who cares for you, who is for you, who is intimately involved in your life. We must come back to this again and again and again. Otherwise, all this is completely useless. So Anchor Church, do you know that God the Father loves you? He cares about you. That he is for you, not against you that his love for you has been displayed on the cross as Jesus dies for you in your place for your sins. Do you know that God the Father wants you to bring to him all your hurts, all your pains, all your fears, all your frustrations, all your hopes, your dreams, all your needs. He desperately longs for you to come to him with those things. So his invitation to us over and over and over again is simply to come. Come to him. Come to him in prayer. So the question is, Anchor Church, are you willing to do that? Are you willing to come to your father who loves you, who cares for you, who likes you? Not next week, not in two weeks, not when you get life figured out a bit more today. Are you willing to come to him today? Are you willing to pursue him today? Are you willing to spend time with your father today? The invitation is simply to come to him, to pray without ceasing. That's his invitation to us. Let's pray. 
God, thank you that you are a good father. Thank you for your love for us. And thank you for this invitation to come to us, to come to you. God, I, I pray for us as we end this series and as we reflect upon uh, all the things we've been challenged with, all the things that we've learned, God, that we would um, just simply come to you. God, that whatever is holding us back from developing a prayer life, God, that you would reveal that to us now. That you would help us to see if there's sin or pride, if there's just laziness, if there's indifference, God, that you would convict us of that right now. Holy Spirit, would you come and reveal those things to us? And yet as you do that, Holy Spirit, would you come and also show us the love of the Father for us. That we are not orphans. We are not cast aside, but, but you have a deep love for us and you long for us to be in communion with you. Jesus, would you soften our hearts so that we can experience that? Would you soften our hearts so that we would desire that? Come, Jesus, would you make us men and women of prayer? We pray this in your name. Amen.